Welcome back to this lesson about solving nonlinear equations using bracketing methods. In the previous videos, we introduced the bisection method, how to use it, and the algorithm uh, to solve it. And finally, we introduced uh, a simple example. Now we will go to Octave and see how we can write a code that uh, solves that same example using uh, the programming language Octave. Uh, now we uh, are at uh, the Octave here. This is the code that's available on uh, github.org. Uh, the first step uh, in almost all my programs is to clear the memory and close all open uh, windows and clear the console. That's not really a mandatory step, but I prefer to use it every time. Uh, then the first step uh, in the algorithm or in the program would be defining x1 and x2, minus 1 and 5, as we introduced them in the example. Then finding the values of the functions at those two uh, um, uh, boundaries of the bracket. Uh, now, uh, as a final step for uh, defining the algorithm, uh, we define the tolerance. Uh, here it's 1 over 1,000 and uh, the maximum number of iterations which is defined by uh, 20 this is both are by selection uh, some problems need more than 20 iterations sometimes even a thousand iterations uh, some problems need uh, a tolerance of less uh, or uh, i mean uh, less tolerance like uh, 10 to the minus 6 or maybe, uh, or maybe uh, they are not that sensitive of problems, so maybe only 10%, or 0.1 or 0.01 would be uh, enough. Uh, here we initiate the value of the counter and the value of the error. Notice that I start by putting a large value on the error to make sure that uh, the, uh, the, um, the loop will not uh, terminate from the first step. Uh, and also, we, I create a new variable here called x3 old and put x1 in that uh, um, uh, variable in order to uh, use it uh, to evaluate uh, the error. Now, uh, I start a while loop. So, this is an infinite loop because it says while true. It's, it will run forever unless uh, there is a break statement uh, uh, in the loop. Uh, the first step of the algorithm, increment uh, the counter, then evaluate x3, taking the average of the two boundaries, then finding the value of f of x3. Now we check for the termination criteria. First, if x uh, is not a zero, then we, uh, we use the formula for the relative error, which is x3 minus x3 old over x3, Otherwise, then the error becomes the, uh, the, the, the length of the interval, the distance between x1 and x2. If the value of f of x3 is 0, or the error is less than the tolerance, or the number of counters is, uh, the, the number of iterations is more than the maximum number of iterations allowed, then break. Then at this point, we stop doing uh, what we are doing. Otherwise, we check. If f of x1 times f of x3 is less than 0, then we replace uh, x2 by x3 and replace f of x2 by f of x3. Otherwise, I replace x1 by x3 and the value of f of x1 by the value of f of x3. Then here a final step is to store the uh, old value, or for this, for until this point, it's still the new value of x3 into what we call x3 old. Because in the uh, at the end of the loop here, we go back and evaluate another x3, which is the new x3. This is all what we need to do to find the solution. This is a very short, very simple, straightforward program. Notice here that I used the, uh, the function, I wrote it explicitly three times. Once to evaluate f of x1, and another to f of x2. And finally here I use it every time in the loop to evaluate f of x3. 
three. Uh, in more complex problems, uh, probably it would be a nice idea to create a special function, to create a function and call it with the value of x3 uh, to return f of x3. Uh, uh, this is not part of uh, what we are trying to demonstrate here, although it may be a nice uh, or a good uh, programming practice to create functions uh, for the lines that are repeated several times in your code. At the end, when uh, the loop is broken, uh, we get to display the number of times the iteration of iteration, uh, the error x3 and f of x3. Let's just run it now and see what happens. Here, when it's run in 14 times, the error became 5.2 times 10 to the minus 4, which is less than the tolerance. Uh, the value of x3 is 0 0.69299 and f of x3 is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 5. Uh, for example, if I change the tolerance here, instead of having x to the minus 3, let's have uh, 10 to the minus 4 and rerun the program. Then it took 17 iterations and uh, the value we got is 0 0.9, uh, sorry, 0.693. Uh, this is supposed to be more accurate because f of x3 here is smaller than what we got the last time. But all what's changed is the uh, actually the fourth, not the third, the fourth uh, digit here. Because uh, in the previous time, let's get it back again here, uh, 3 f of x3, it was 299, so uh, uh, this 9 became, uh, if, if we stop at 3 digits, it, this is still 693, uh, if we stop at 4, it's still 653, uh, 693, so we actually have the solution accurate to 5 decimal places uh, with x to the minus uh, 3. Anyway, uh, I hope this is a clear program. It's straightforward. It's simple. It's available on GitHub. I would uh, like you to download it and play around with it. Feel free to use it in any of your libraries. Uh, don't even bother about keeping my name on it. It's, uh, it's not a big deal. It's a very simple program. Uh, and uh, going back here. Uh, so what we did is we introduced the program. Uh, to uh, use the bisection algorithm to solve um, a simple uh, root finding problem. Uh, in the coming video, we will introduce the false position method. Following that, we will introduce the algorithm to show how the false position method uh, and maybe discuss whether it's better or not uh, to use the false pos position uh, instead of the bisection method. See you next video.